Ladies and gentlemen, welcome back to another episode of Pillars of Eternity 2, as I continue with my blind let's play. Like I mentioned last time, we're going to continue and head back once again to Tikawara and continue that uh, storyline. So yeah, because we just finished up Maya's quests. Um, and it sounds like, yeah, we helped in all those assassinations. So we'll see what comes of that. You know what? It's slavers. Oh wait, it's not, it's, we're the same level. Heck, heck yeah, let's attack. Let's attack, yeah. Yeah, now you're running. Uh-huh. Alright. We're just gonna go ahead and board it. Uh, you have to level 10. Okay. We probably should do the naval combat, but let's just, let's just go ahead and try to board it. like we got a, a wizard. Let's go after the wizard. You see that, okay. Let's do that. Oh my goodness. That was really effective. Dang, guys. I love that. I don't know if you saw it. You probably did, but that little jump, dash, charge maneuver that El Saris did. Fantastic. Share the coins. Even though they're max morale still. Nice. We're going to stash all this. That's fine. Accept. Yeah. We took out some slavers. You know, let's check the ship. Uh, so they're still expert. Seasoned. They've now... Oh, expert cannoneer. Excellent. Seasoned. Seasoned, seasoned. Excellent. Novice navigator. Oh, wait, they're lying and waiting. That's right. Um, still. Wait, do I have a rank? It's like I do, but... Oh, well. Um, that's okay. Whoops. Alright, back to Tikawara. Um, and actually thinking about it, I, I want to say I needed to talk to the chieftain, actually, to find out where Pogokohara is. I know I'm going to explore the island go out and explore all that. But I feel like that's what I need to do. From what I remember quest-wise, or, you know, what the journal said. I guess I'll find out. Alright. Let's go into town. And I guess that means also I need a decide on the choice who I want to, is mine. to support in terms of the Valians, Rautai I know I've brought this up so many times now I know either one or the other it's gonna you know make Palagina mad make oh, actually I don't know about Maya at this point if we don't support Rautai 
I don't know. We'll see. But we'll uh, we'll talk to the chief. Namara huddles in close conversation with the warriors next to him. He whispers in a low, stern voice. No sooner do you catch his eye than he, he grins wide enough to stretch every muscle in his face. Greetings, friend. Always an honor to receive guests. Elceris, Captain Defiant, at your service. I would shower you with the fruit of our harvest, but the season is unkind, I say. So I've heard. Kokokohara is restless. Even from afar, the storms tear our bounty up by the root and chase fish to calmer shores. He raises his hand to gesture to the east. His hands fill limply to his side. Uh, the Valian expedition was headed there, correct? You know of them already then? Yes. The Valians went to Pococahar for luminous Audra, but their expedition does not return. As the storms grow wild, Tikawara dies around us. No traveler will land here if they are forced to eat their belts, I say. Uh, why not move the tribe elsewhere? In our old villages, we were raided by pirates, stolen by slavers, and killed by Rawatayan scouts. His head droops further with each admission, as if acknowledgement diminishes him personally. So I brought them here where the soil is too poor for Kuiki fruit and the water's too shallow for great fish. At least we are in the path of Valian traders as they come and go. This is protection, prosperity, a future. That is a possibility. Um, so how is Pocahontas causing, causing storms? You are new to the islands. I would not expect you to know of these things. Our ancestors told of luminous Audra, the bones of the dead fire, breaching through the sands of Pococahara. Ngati raises her watery fist in defense of the Adra. Valian or Juana, it is nothing to her who suffers in the wake of such anger. At the implication of divine providence, Palagina's right eye twitches in annoyance, the membrane flickering out and back. Fighting against it, she forces a weak smile and nods politely. Cocking his head to the side, uh, Rawanu remirrors the gesture with a full smile. He seems to be puzzling out Pelagina's reaction. So, I have some history with old places that causes storms. I'll take a look. His eyes widen a little. The smile that creases his face seems for a moment genuine. Here, this was a token passed down from the Rangas, said to come from Pococahara in brighter days. He passes you a heavy length of copper shaped in a spiral. Ooh, a, a key. This piece of elegant craftwork is a copper representation of the Muzuma shell, a corpse-eating snail that thrives in the waters of Deadfire. Scratch marks and a green patina only hint at the age of the piece. Thank you. If you need aid, Himurihi's warriors need only someone to bark commands and they will go. Uh, where can I find supplies? The Valians left many crates with the dwarf. He hoards them by the beach. But we never refuse a guest. If you need sleep, Himuihi will show you all the villages contending for the honor of your visit. And if you need strong Mataru warriors to fight at your side, then Himuihi can help you with this also. She guards the trading post. Uh, tell me about your tribe. A village here is young still, but we will grow when the Valians come. Takera, like an ingrown toenail. For what does Nagati's Chosen protest? Give Tikawara a chance to prove itself. That is for what we build many houses now, even a trading post. We make Tikawara pleasing to the Valians. Then when they come for Pococahara, they build their harbor here. They must. You don't seem to mind the Valian influence. Some tribes push foreigners away, but it is good to have powerful friends. A frown briefly clouds his expression. The company can be a good friend to helpful partners, even out here. She nods warmly towards him. If the Valians come, they will build an outpost here in Tikawara. His gaze unfocuses like he is convincing himself of every word. Then we will have the trade, protection, and friendship of a mighty nation. A 
favorable arrangement for both sides, I say. You know, I, I was just kind of thinking, this is kind of just thinking thinking to myself, but maybe the Valians would be better per se to them. I don't know. I don't know how Rautai would treat them. I mean, granted, what we just went through with Maya, I don't want to, I guess what I'm trying to say is I don't want to, you know, make Maya so mad that it makes her leave. I, I, I've been hoping to like, you know, build enough confidence, friendship with her that it doesn't I don't know. Well, I guess we'll have to see. Um, so I don't know. It because it, it. I think they would actually rather maybe the Valians than Rautai. I'm not sure. Are you always this friendly? I say that in Tikawara, there is always a spot around the fire, and a gurgle reverberates from the stomach of the guard standing next to Ranu. He grimaces and places his hands over his belly to muffle the sound. Uh, the Ranga shoots him a withering glare. Oh, come on now. I mean, he's just... I know, you're all hungry, but come on now. There's no reason for the glare. And a Kuiki in every hand. When he turns back to you, he all... He's all wide smiles and pleasantries. So back to my previous questions. Speak on, friend. I had questions on Pokokoharu. Wind and sorrow are all that emerge from the ruins. Never answers. Are there any dangers beyond the storm? Ikira, we paddle our canoes the long way around Pokokohara for a reason, I say. Another people lived among our ancestors and built a temple in the desert. Now there is only death. But the Valians close their ears to my warning. Speak on, friend. What say? I think I've said enough. So, thank you for the time, Chief. Chief, wow, Chief, wow. Chieftain, r r r Ranga, sorry. Oh my goodness. Uh, so yeah, farewell. You need something? That will do, I say. So yeah, Pokorohara to the east. Let us... Because I said I would, let's explore this island first. Before we head off east. Alright, by foot. One hour and 21 minutes. Oh, and there we go. Pokokohara Ruins. Okay, there's combat. Let us go. There's the burial site. Some more. Oh, I see. In the old burial grounds. Let's go to this trail first. The scent comes upon you gradually as you travel. It smells of the kitchens of Cadnua, of honey, cinnamon, and fresh bread, a meal shared with those now absent. Off the path, you catch a glimmer of movement. Something large and bulbous stirs beyond the trees. You know what? I'm going to approach openly. We're not going to sneak. Near the center of a nearby clearing stands a Demogon. Uh, tending a large to a large spore, Del Del Delmagon, uh, forgive me if I'm pronouncing it wrong, uh, seems formed of the living tropics, with the vibrant flowers cresting her head. Her shape suggests that of an elf, a plant with pointing ears. She looks up as you enter the clearing, eyes widening slightly as she takes you in. She takes a few steps to the side before reaching a provocative hand to rest upon a large spore. Her attention remains on you. Like the club that knows you better, the tread where uh, you tread where others fear. Her voice rumbles like a falling tree limb. Tell us why. I'm gonna say, are you in trouble? Do you need help? She says nothing for a moment, her head tilting to the side. Why do you ask this? Do you think we fear the spore? 
She smiles and brushes a hand along one of the spore's fawns. We have nothing to fear here. Drawn by the scent, where are you? Oh, sorry, were you? My goodness. Her voice sounds like the whispers of the wind through the leaves. We do not know why the stubborn spore does that. He has rooted his meal. The spore stu shreds, shrudders slightly, and you notice a thick tome tucked among its roots. Don't know why, everybody, that I'm just kind of been stuttering the past kind of couple of videos occasionally. Um, but alas, I'll get through it. So, I'm going to examine the spore. I'm going to choose... I'm thinking Maya, but let's look... Yeah, I'm choosing, I'm choosing Maya. The bulbous fungus towers taller than an Amara. Its fleshy fawns hanging over its bulging stalk, and miasma of yellow dust hangs around it. It gently stirs in a light breeze, and thank goodness for her high survival. A dank spore, you can barely make out the recumbent form of some unfortunate kiff, tangled in its roots. The essence of the spore sucks from its victim glimmering along its length. If it notices you, it will likely attack, and inhaling the spores clouding around it could confuse your senses. So, I'm going to actually be going. She nods to you, gesturing for you to continue your journey. Walk carefully through the wilds. Tell no one of what you found here. Will do. Let's see, I don't... Didn't want to... We'll grab this first. Uh, but yeah, I didn't want to engage in any conflict there. Oops. Alright, a tomb rises from the earth before you. Its stone exterior is well wrought and decorated with reliefs of Tangaloa and Nagati. It likely houses the body of someone important to the local Huana tribe. Two hours pass and find a collection of rare gems. Onyx. Continue poking around a sigil of darkness, Warpstone. Continue in Agate. Couple more hours. And Paradite. And that is it. Alright, let's go. Let's go here. Alrighty. So, the rumbling reaches your ears first, a low growl from the land, before being pierced by the cry of a distant bird. The ground sets to vibrating beneath your feet, the growing roar of the stampeding beasts echoing around you. You crest a rise to find that the stampede has passed, now only a rumbling cloud in the distance. As the dust settles, you note that a few of the boar remain. Fallen and still, with large feathered darts protruding from their fur. A single upright boar remains, a piglet that nudges its stout against one of the prone beasts. I'm gonna wait and watch. The advantage on the high ground offers a comfortable view of the boars. After a few minutes, lanky four-armed figures lope out of the cover of the trees, each paddling around the boars in the ground. The fish head wilder grudge and hits at one of the one another before crouching to feast on their catch. The boars still living squeal pitifully in protest. You know, disperse them with a, a summon so, uh, uh, storm. Goodness. It's all you, Takehu. Takehu's chant stirs the spirits, and what begins as a light breeze quickly escalates into a raging storm. Thunder shakes the air, and lightning bolts fall like arrows upon the earth. The Langenfath hunters flee, screeching in fear. We investigate. As the storm subsides, you approach the downed boars. The porcelain beast cannot be saved. Oh, dang it. But you can easily calm... Sorry, not calm. Claim some edible meat from their carcasses. You also locate a bottle of Langenfath's poison left behind when you fled. You continue your journey. And we've gained all that. 
All right, we're gonna go there before we go to the ravine. The ravine's probably where those uh, the brood mother is. All right. Uh, let me check the map. All right, everybody, let's form up. We're gonna do this by the books. If I check your corners, and that's exactly what I'm saying. Everybody, hold up if you can. Hang on, hold up. Turn around. There you go. Watch me, mother. Oh, she's watching. I need to remember that uh, Maya has that the necklace Captain. of fireballs. Not a problem, Captain. The season of harvest is here. Oop, nope. Attack this one. And attack this one. Ooh, I like that effect above Sodi. That little uh, flame crown. I'm pretty sure it's. Yeah, one of the abilities I'm pretty sure I got her a while back. Gonna store all this. All right. And then we have some food. Uh yeah, go go disarm that. What did you find, Ishi? And disarm that one. Just in case. Got someone in my Oh. Assassin Vine, okay. It makes no difference. Oh no. There we go. Let's rip this whirlwind. I know I've said this before, but I really love all the effects, spell effects and abilities and whatnot. They just look so good. I'm just, once again, appreciating it. Wow. Appreciating it more. Wait, Ruin Boulder? Oh, wait, hang on. I'll check that out in a second. You find an old stone coffer, pinned and molted by long exposures to the elements. The lid is cracked, but thick, woody vines like giant's fingers hold it in place. Let's do a strength check. Have someone pull the vines away from the chest. And it will be myself. Oh wow! It, I'm surprised. You can't pry a single vine loose. In fact, as you tug, you feel them tighter. Tighten their group around the coffer. Alright, let's cast the ability to burn it. Maya, it's all you. Actually, you know what? Let's... No, let's hold off. Let's do... This one. The plants squeal and pop in the flames, giving off an odor that smells... Uh, disconcertingly like burning flesh... They wither into scraggy, blackened strands, yet no sooner have they shrunk than they quiver and twitch, beginning to fill with sap once more. You rip the lid from the coffer before they can regain the grip on it. You retrieve an ancient, 
antique bronze hatchet, pulling it from the coffer, even as the vines feebly grasp at it with hungry tendrils. What is this? Okay. If you want to read it, there you go. I'm not going to read it, but... Uh, yeah, pause the video if you want to read that item. Interesting. Okay, let me check out this, this boulder really fast. Sections of the boulder have been etched with strange ruins and glyphs. Many of them seem to represent local plants and wildlife. Uh, hi. A large Langfath, a brood mother, by her size and crest, surfaces from the pool. Around her neck hangs a knotted cord struck with shiny odds and ends. She uh, chirps softly. As you draw closer, she gurgles in agitation but does not attack. She dives back down and disappears. You hear her splashing and chattering coming from further up the slope. She almost looks docile, don't she? Looks that way. We'll see. Oh. Uh, cocking her head, the Bruma watches you and lets out an inquisitive chirp. I'm gonna chirp at her. The broodmother stops gurgling and takes a tentative step closer, craning her neck with interest. Other Langfrak appear uh, and chirp at you. Uh huh. She is talkative, this one. The broodmother turns to him, her eyes glowing wider by the moment. Takehu winks at her. Zodi's eyes gleam with dark amusement. You need a minute alone? Oh my gosh. A young Langford pokes its head out from behind one of the adults and burps happily. Or, sorry, burbles. The adult ushes it back with a firm claw. It looks smaller than the hatchings in the cage, but not by much. Oh, Anna. Uh... I'm guessing she's probably trying to say Hoana, but who's Anna? Hoana! Yeah, that's what it is. Hoana? Snarls and gurgles rise in volume. The other long thoughts bare their teeth. Oh, Anna. Her attending warriors bandish spears, clubs, and blow guns. Can't really blame them, can ya? Do not pretend to understand the opinions of fish, I say. You hate the Huana. Gilad, I did not even know these wilder could understand kith languages. Hatchlings. Many claws tighten about weapons and tails lash in eager, uh, hypnotic rhythm. The broodmother watches you. Yes, I saw the hatchling's cage in the village. She screeches with emotion, rocking her whole body back and forth. Her bristling fin flashes like a blade. The other langfish bare their teeth even wider. Turning her attention from you to the formation, the broodmother hisses and flicks her tail, gesturing down toward the bottom of the ravine, toward the village. Oh. Anna. I can rescue your hatchlings, but your clan must stay away from the village. The broodmother chitters and blinks at you, tilting her head this way and that. At last, she raises her head and trills to the treetops. One by one, the other Langfeth lower their weapons and snap their jaws, jaws shut. Please, oh, hatchlings. Well. I'll see what I can do. I kind of figured this was coming, since, you know, um, since we saw them in the cage and whatnot. Alright. You must gather your party before venture. And I have to say also, I love the, the narrator's voice, uh, the woman that's been narrating. Uh, she's been really good. Um, of course, she hasn't popped up too recently. Um, but still, really good voice work. Honestly, all around, just the whole game so far. Alright, back to town.
We'll see how this goes. Hopefully I don't have to attack the whole town. All right. You need something? Yes. You're not gonna like this. Please don't get mad, but I need you to free those Langfath hatchlings. Are you crazy? Then him Weehee will go and blame me. You see the woman at the trading post? The angry one? He grabs your arm with a strong, stickly hand and points across the dock to a scowling woman who stands with her arms folded. She will have my corpse for bait if you do this. Why would she blame you? She despises me. How could disaster not be my fault? Besides, the Ranga will bury her at high tide if she so much as insults you. Or any foreigner. At least go and see her before you release her prizes. Then, maybe I find some other place to be until her anger cools. Alright, we will do. We'll, uh, we'll see how this goes. For what do you linger here? The village is much too quiet. We need to release the Langfeth hatchlings. She throws back her head and laughs. <laughs> but you do not laugh. Then you do not joke. For what would I do this foolish thing? So I'm going to try some insight and some diplomacy. Wait, how much is that? Wow. 16. 12 for myself and 44 uh, party assist. So, I will say, they have clans and families. What would you do if someone caged your children? Her expression hardens. Then I never forgive them. We must destroy the Broodmother now, before she is bolder. No, let's release them, please. For what do you say this again? Oh my goodness. You want them to leave you alone? Release their young and they will. They are animals. They hunt where they smell food, and they smell food in our village. If I release the young ones, then they attack when they grow big. Listen, the Langfath are reclusive by nature. They would avoid your village if you did not have their young. When they ran from me before, I thought it was only my weapon they feared. She laughs again, but tapers off in a pensive silence. But suppose you are right. Then I do not have to suffer their stench. Take the key then, and yell for help if anything goes wrong. Thank you. Farewell. Alright, let's go do it. You need something? Nope. Look out! They escaped! Oh wow. Leaping from the water, the broodmother eagerly chirps and beckons towards her hatchlings. They rally around her with unbridled joy. She lets out a low pert pitched warble when she sees you. The broodmother makes a show of removing her necklace and laying it out on the sand, then gesturing from you to the necklace and back again. Chirping and waving her crest, the broodmother and her hatchlings dive back into the ocean. It was a pleasure. I hope the Lagufath do not come back. Don't worry, I'm sure they will not. Marbles of the Finn. Uh, I'm assuming I put that in the stash. So, yes, looks like it. Constitution plus one, intellect plus one, excellent. What is this? Collection of trinkets. Uh, range the crew temperament with uh, boost on outgoing damage of all allies within range. Oh my goodness. Uh, yes, please. So wait, hang on. So it boosts constitution, and intellect. What do I have equipped right now? Intellect, history, and insight. 
You know what? Let's switch it. I'm going to wear that necklace. Because, yeah. Well, that, this brilliant? that is awesome. Oh, and we can level. And we're going to do... Of course, athletics. And then... Diplomacy, once again. Okay, so... Sweeps the fighter melee weapon in a large arc, making a primary attack on each foe and knocking them back and prone. Ooh, excellent. Grants a chance to complete resist the effects of a hostile spell. Vanguard. Improved critical. Uh, that's okay. I'm gonna do this. I'm gonna do that a bit. Ooh, we have one more. So in that case, let's do spell resistance. Level 11. I'm guessing the max level is at 20. I doubt it's at 30. I doubt it's 30. I'm just thinking in, you know, D&D terms. I'm pretty sure it's probably it's probably 20. All right, before we head out, let's get some supplies. Let's lower that value. Um What does Ooh, hang on. Sorry. Oh, wow. No, I do not need it as much as I thought I would. So, never mind. Um, that's okay. We're good. We're good on supplies for right now. I guess we could sell some stuff. I don't know if I'm really going to use that lance. I'm gonna say no. Let's leave by sea. All right. Um, I know we have that left, but I'll I'll save it. And that's. Oh, Valian Trading Company. Alright, let's go this way. There's Poker Kaharo. There's another storm. We are avoiding that like the plague. So there's a shrine. There's the dock. Or a place to dock. Ooh, let's grab this first. That's a shipwreck. Um, actually, I'll come back for the shipwreck. Let's grab the supplies. And let's grab these supplies. Hang on, I'm just, you know, doing the, the fog of war. I know it's kind of putting out, you know, resources and whatnot, but that's okay. All right, and we have landed in Pokokohara. I think I'm gonna go check out that shrine first. Oh. You notice a small pavilion containing a large weathered statue of stone a little ways off the path. It appears to be a Juana Shrine. Search the surrounding area. Maya, it is all you. The area around the shrine is clear and may have proved to be a good place to rest. So approach it and identify it. Uh... This is religion, yes? Yes. Zodi? A pair of stone eels twist up the sculpture. Each eel's mouth cling to the other tail, creating an unbroken circuit. It portrays Rikuhu, the Oana's rendition of Barath. How fitting. An inscription runs along the shrine's base. Some flee, others fight. Rikuhu consumes all. 
Pollen and dirt dust the statue, and grass grows wild at its base. It seems some time since there's this shrine was tended. Well, I'm gonna set camp and, and rest. Three hours pass without complication. You wake and continue your journey. So eight hours. Okay, so gotcha. Probably could have prayed to it, but we're not going to. Alright, to the ruins. Ooh, the music. To shelter, yes? Before my hair dries out. Is that okay? I was wondering. Oh, and that's no, 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 no! Get out of it! Get out of it! Get out of it! That will that will slow us down. There we go. Okay, now attack. Yeah, I was either thinking that was quicksand or oh, nice, they leveled. Um, or like it did, slowed us down. Oh no, Elsiris! There you go. Okay, we'll stash all that. And looks like Palagina and Zodi leveled. Arcana. Let's go with Intimidate. And we're gonna go. No, not that. Um Chanter Paladin. Let's go Chanter, I think. And we're gonna go... can't do that. What is this one? Oh, Charm. Okay. And then this one... Immune to Dexterity Afflictions for 10 seconds. Nice. Powers allies in the area effect with a strong, steadfast inspirations. Summons two fearsome ogres to fight for the party. The yes, I'm sorry, but I'm, I'm picking that one. I don't know if we're ever going to use that, but that just sounds awesome and very useful. Happy to oblige. God, I just imagine Palachina just, you. just you know, going along, and then she summons two ogres as like honor guard for her and whatnot. I don't know, that just sounds really awesome. So I guess I'm going to continue this way. Let's grab this. Okay. Ooh, hang on. There we go. Everybody get back in formation here. Wait for it. There we go. Okay, Maya, and fireball them. I don't know if I pulled it off. We'll try it. Oh, goodness. Okay, yeah, that hurt all of us, but... Happy to oblige. I'm gonna try to get my to second wind. Oh no, El Serhis. Get up there. There you go. Oh, 
I'm here. Well, that sounded that sounded horrible. Just saying. With relish. There we go. Of course. Speak freely. Time to loot all this. Oh wait, I oh whatever. You were saying? Whoa. Okay. I just realized that we haven't we haven't leveled. I need to do that. Okay. Looks like we've got a little bit more coming. Zarups. Uh what if there's a dragon nearby? Oh wow, there's a lot more Zarups than I thought. Okay, everybody, let's double back. Like a fish on the hook. Hang in there, Takehu. Oh, there you go, there you go. I love his transformation. I love that he can just turn into that shark or, you know, what have you. Alright. Let's level them up. Let's do Arcana for him. And then Metaphysics. Okay, conjure greater blight. Hastens uh, Barris wheel, causing rejuvenated plants to spring up in the corpses of fallen and heal allies in the air. Yes. Let's grab that one. Okay. Complete a weapon summoning spells cast. Okay, and then what is this one? Quick summoning. Reduces the time to complete a creature summoning spell cast. Let's do that one, I think. I'll handle this. What have we here? Okay, yeah. Get rid of that. Ooh, thunder crack pistol. That just reminds me, I never looked at... Here, hold on to that. But I never looked at that one weapon. So she's using that. Um, so I'm guessing superb is better than exceptional? Is exceptional better? We're gonna try it. I th I think. Whoops. Okay. It looks really cool. Okay, this value is lower, so I'm gonna I'm gonna keep this one. I'm gonna try this one for right now. The damage is lower, but. The target and length and all that, I don't know. We'll, we'll see. Okay. Alchemy Zodi, and then Religion, as always. Spiritual Ally, nice. Seeing the duration of all beneficial effects. Ooh, let's grab that one. Their weapons, and then creature. No, I'm good. Um, and then we'll do. Let's do that. Pillar of Holy Fire. And then Maya. Excellent. Continue with mechanics. 
And then how about... Yeah, survival. Yeah, let's increase that one. And then one more... What is this one? The ranger's animal companion falls over and appears to be dead. When the companion stands back out, they regain health from the time they spent resting. Yeah, let's give... Well, let's give uh, Maya spell resistance. I'm listening. Just say the word. All right, let's continue on. There. Okay. Oh well. Attack. Never mind. This does not work. Oh boy, I hope it works. I've got this, Captain. I'm listening. Not so hard. You need some. You have my attention. Whoops. Okay. At your service. I'll take it with this. Let's check that. Um, let's see, got coins. No need to ask twice. I found something. Oh wow! Okay. Garnet and Scoria. Trying to get rid of the fog of war right now. Oh wow! What? Okay. Up, up! It's coming. I'm sorry. Apretta inside. I... That was probably the storm, I'm guessing. I really like the look of this place. It looks it looks great. Let's just check over here really fast. Oh, there's a well, is that another place in? Instead of going through the front, we might mm, might have to check that out. This looks downright hospitable for an abandoned campsite. Right. So yeah, we have that. Let's check the barrels. Still can't take the repair because we're, we're, of course we're not damaged. But if we were. All right, just to get rid of the fog of war. It's really why I'm doing this. There we go. Okay, let me go back. We should not have left Vector with those Solana. Then swim back to Tikawara. We will take your share. Uh. Interesting. The tent is empty, but the stack of excavation tools, shovels, spades, brushes, half buried. Sparsely furnished. Rolled up map in the satchel. It shows a course plotted from Tikawara Island to the west. Uh, what did it just say? Or what did it just give? Um... Everything appears to be intact. Find a map at the camp with directions to Tikawara, which I already know of. Uh, you know, there. Um, okay, so it looks like I can either go down this well or go down, or not go down, but go through the front. Okay, so 
I think what I'm going to do, um, I'm actually going to call the video here. Uh, might be a little bit shorter than the others, but uh, I'm not, I think I'm going to go down the well next time. See where if, if it leads anywhere. If not, I'm just going to go through the front and, you know, be that. Uh, as it may. But anyways, um, so yeah, that's I think that's what I'm going to do. And I will continue this another time. So as always, ladies and gentlemen, thank you so much for watching. I, you know, once again, greatly appreciate it. I really do. Wherever you guys are, have a good day. Have a good night. Take it easy, everyone.